Hey everyone, my name is Brian Lagunas and I am here to answer your tech questions. If you have a tech question you'd like to have answered, now's the time to subscribe to my channel, like this video, leave a comment below with your question and I may just answer it in my next video. Now this question is a popular question. I've actually got this question multiple times on multiple of my previous videos. Not only that, this question just recently came up in my live stream on Thursday on Twitch. So what's this question? Well the question is, Brian, I am doing some awesome asynchronous programming using the latest and greatest APIs that .NET has to offer. That means I'm using async await. And I've noticed that when I await a task, I have an option for a method called configure await. And this method takes basically two values, true or false. How do I know which value to provide? Do I say configure await false all the time? Do I set configure await to true sometimes? Like, I don't know. When do I use configure await true versus configure await false? Well, I'm going to make this super easy for you because I have a direct answer that needs no explanation. If you are writing code on the UI, you're going to set configure await to true. If you're writing library code that will be shared and used by other people, then you're going to set configure await to false. If you actually care why you would either want to set true or false, then you want to continue watching this video. Otherwise, you can just subscribe now, like this video, comment about how awesome it was, and move on. Otherwise, roll that intro. In this demo, we are working with a very simple WPF.NET Core 3 application. As you can see, we have a very simple application. We are handling a button click event. In this event, we are doing some work asynchronously. As you can see, it's a simple task that delay for a thousand milliseconds. And when that work is done, we are setting the background color of a button to green. Let's go ahead and run the application and see this in action. Here's the application running. I'm going to click the button. We'll wait one second and boom, there is the green background. Perfect, works as expected. Now it's important we understand how the await keyword works. Everything after the await keyword is the continuation task. And this is quite often the task that is returned by the async method. This code up here, this code runs synchronously, in this case on the UI thread. Now this code here in the asynchronous method, this code is usually invoked on a separate thread, usually a worker thread. Now the important question we have to answer is, where does the continuation task run? Does it run on the UI thread? Or does it run on the same thread as the asynchronous method? This is what we use the configure await method for, to control which thread the continuation task executes on. Right now we are working in the UI. This means that by default, we want to use configure await true. Well, why is that? Well, let's see what happens if we set configure await to false. Let's run the application and let's see what happens. Let's click the button and boom, we have an exception. Why do we have an exception? Well, remember what the configure await does. The configure await tells which thread the continuation task should run on. So in this case, configure await is saying, you know what, continuation task, just stay on the thread I am. Don't even worry about going back to the UI thread. Well, you can't do that when you're trying to set a UI component because this UI component was created on the UI thread. Therefore, we're trying to modify a component that was created on a different thread. Hence, an exception. So that just reinforces the idea that if we're dealing on the UI, let's just keep our default setting of configure await true to make sure that our continuation task returns to the UI thread. Now, Let's talk about what happens if you are a library developer. In this case, let's imagine that our do work async is in some type of library that we authored and we're sharing with people. Now, the thing about being a library author is we don't know how our code is going to be used. So let's do something evil. I'm gonna comment this out and I'm going to create a variable to hold our task of do work async. And then I'm gonna do something you really should never do. It's I'm going to call the wait method on the task. Now, I say never do, but let's be pragmatic here. There are some cases in development where you may have to do this, but this is going to prove my point even more. Now, let's not make any changes to our library code and keep in mind that our current task.delay, the default value is configure await true. Let's run the application and let's see what happens. Our application's running. I'm going to hit the click me button. I'm gonna wait one second and nothing happened. What's going on? I actually, I, I'm locked out. What happened? We've actually introduced what's called a deadlock. Our application is completely locked down. Let's take a look at why this is happening. 
let's start by setting a couple of breakpoints. I'm gonna set one here, here. How about a breakpoint there? This breakpoint, breakpoint, looks great. Okay, let's run the application again and walk through what's going on here. We're gonna click the button. And right now we are in the button click event, which is on the UI thread. Everything's going to happen on the UI thread until we hit the task.delay. At this point, the task is going to return to the task.wait. As you know, task.wait will block the current thread, which is the UI thread. Well, in this case, the task.wait is also waiting for the return of the dowork async method. This continuation task is the debug write line on line 37. However, because we said that the configure await is true, which is the default value, this line of code, the continuation task, is waiting for the UI thread to return, but it can't because it's locked up right here by the wait. Therefore, we have created a deadlock. That's why if you are a library author, you're going to want to set your configure await to false. Let's go ahead and remove our breakpoints and rerun the application. Application's running, we'll click the button, wait our second, and boom, it's green. That's because we are not telling the continuation task of our library code to wait on the return of the previous thread, therefore preventing a deadlock. Now, I want to point out, by setting configure await false on this task, will have no impact on the setting of configure await on the task in the button click event. 